Number one asks us to match the statements with the congruent triangles based on just the information shown. So in A, it says that, that there are two triangles and three pairs of congruent sides. And so we really only see two pairs of congruent sides marked in number one and in number three. But in number three, we also have this middle segment that's in both triangles. So that's going to be congruent to itself. So that would be three pairs of congruent sides. So A goes with number three. B says there are two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another. So in number one, we see these two congruent sides here and the included angle. And then we see two congruent sides and the included angle of another. So B is number one. And then C says that it's two angles and the included side of one. Okay, so we've got two angles here. And the included side would be this side that's the same in both. And then two angles and the included side of another. So C is number two. Number two, sketch a unique, the unique triangles that can be made with angle measures of 40 and 100 degrees and a side length of three. So let me um, get a ruler here and we'll do um, a side length of three inches. So we could know that this, that this um, side here is three. And then we could do um, the protractor and do a 40 degree angle from this side. Okay, so here's 40. And so if I just, um, let me do a dotted line here since we don't know where this is going to end. So this would be a 40 degree angle. And then we could do the 100 degree angle from this side. And so from this side, go to a 100 degree angle. And then we would just extend these um, until they crossed. And that would make us our triangle. So let me just move this so I can extend this 40 degree angle, and then that would create one of the triangles. Oops. So then we would have this triangle here, and that would have um, a three unit side here. We did the 40 degree angle here. This one is 100 degrees. And we know a triangle totals 180, so if we subtract those from 180, we also get 40 degrees for this one. But there's one of the um, triangles. And then by isosceles, we would know that this one is also three. So both of these sides ended up being the same. So that's one of the triangles that could be created. Um, we could also have... Um, that 40 degree angle. And let me just kind of start with a dotted line side here. And then we could do um, the 40 degree angle from here. So there's a 40 degree angle. And then we could actually measure um, the three here. So I'm going to measure that three here. And then we could do another 40 degree angle from this side. Instead of the 100 degree angle, we could do a 40 degree angle here. And then that would create a new triangle as well. So this would be, we did 40 here and we did another 40 here so that this one would be the 100 and then this would be the three. And so there's another unique triangle that could have been drawn where these sides are the same length, but they're not three. And then that bottom one, the longest one is three. Number three, what's the least amount of information you would need to construct this triangle? Now there's going to be, you could pick different parts, um, but you're going to need to know the length of a side. So I'm going to say the length, if I knew the length of LK, and then I knew the measure of two of the angles. So I'm just going to say the measure of angle L and the measure of angle K. So I know this 
side length. And then I would know this angle measure and this angle measure. Then I would be able to create um, the entire triangle. Number four, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDF. So my nose, there's a sequence of rigid motions that takes one to the next. Select all true statements. A coincides with E. So A is the first letter. E is the first letter. So that is true. B coincides with F. So B is the second letter. F is the third letter. So this is false. Um, segment AB coincides with segment EF. So AB are the first two letters, EF are the first and last. So that's going to be false. Those are not corresponding. Um, BC coincides with DF. So BC is the last two letters, DF are the last two letters. So that is true. Segment AC and it coincides with ED. So AC is first and last, ED is first and second, so that's gonna be false. Number five, a rotation by angle ACE using point C as the center takes CBA on to CDE. So we know rotating by this angle takes one triangle on to the next. So explain why the image of CB lines up with um, ray CD. And that's because that's how we defined it. We said that the rotation um, by angle AC is going to take this triangle on to this one. So we know that's segment CB would land on ray, and let me put that ray up here, would land on ray CD. So we know that this is going to rotate over to there. So how do we know that B will actually land, the image of B will land exactly on D? And that's because um, trans transformations um, preserve length. So the image of B is the same distance from C as D is. So B prime or the image of B will land exactly on D. So we knew that these two triangles were congruent. So the length of CB is going to stay the same. So C B prime, B prime is the same distance from C as D is. So it's going to land in the same spot. So is triangle ABC congruent to EDC? And yes, because, um, so which one did we line up? We already lined up, B would be on D. So A is also gonna land on E, okay? Because the rotation will have A coincide with E. We already um, justified B coinciding with D and C um, stays in the same spot. So all vertices coincide. So the two, so there is a rigid motion that takes one to the next. So they are congruent. All right, number six, line EF is the line of symmetry of these two shapes. Claire says that um, ABEF is congruent to CDFE because AB and CD are corresponding. Why is her congruence statement wrong? So A is here. And then this is angle C. Those are the two that she paired up, and that's incorrect because those are not corresponding angles. So we can't just match up corresponding sides. We also need to match up corresponding angles.
So if we were going to write a congruent statement that was true, so let's start with her first statement of A, B, E, F. That would be congruent too. So A actually goes with D. So A actually goes with D. And then B goes with C. And then we have E with E and F with F. Number seven, triangle HEF is the image of HGF after a reflection. Okay, so we're reflecting over this line. Select all statements that must be true. So remember, reflect means flips over. So E is going to land on G. These two angles are going to be the same. They're going to flip on each other. And these two angles are going to flip on each other. So triangle FGH, so going like this is congruent to FEH, and that is true. Triangle EFH is congruent to triangle GFH, and that's going to match up our corresponding parts, so that's true as well. Angle HFE, so this angle, is congruent to, um, HFE is congruent to FHG, this one, that's false. That's in a rotation that the alternating ones are the same. Um, angle EFG, so EFG, so this angle here is congruent to angle EHG, and that is not necessarily true in a reflection. Um, segment EH, so this segment here is congruent to FG, that is false. And then finally, segment GH is congruent to HE, and that would be true. Number eight, when this rectangle ABCD is reflected across line EF, its image is BADC. So remember, these are the congruent images. They're matching up our parts. So A flips to B, B flips to A, D flips to C, C flips to D. How do we know that segment AD, oops, Okay, how do we know that segment AD is congruent to BC? And so we can look here and we see that um, AD in the first, BC in the second. So we can see that those are corresponding parts of those two congruent figures. So they're corresponding parts of congruent figures. So they're congruent. Now, is it true... I mean that a rectangle has two pairs of parallel sides, yes, but it didn't talk about that in here. First of all, we don't care about parallel sides. We want to prove that they're congruent. Um, any two sides of a rectangle are congruent is not true. Con um, congruent parts of congruent figures are corresponding, not true. This diagram began from the construction of a regular hexagon. Describe a rigid motion that will take this figure onto itself. So we can see that it looks like it goes from here over to here. And so we can rotate. So we want to do a rotation. There's only two kind of equal halves. So we're going to rotate it 180 degrees around the hexagon's center. 